Let's go to coach speak, coach and player speak real quick so I can get to another um, topic that I want to get to, another segment before we get out of here. Um, coach Rivera, let's start with Coach Rivera, who spoke multiple times. Obviously, he's speaking almost after every practice, every other practice. Uh, was was intrigued by a few things. So one of the quotes that I wrote down in my notes was, Coach Rivera said, very few positions are set in our mind. All right. So that tells me that they don't really know. And, and that's part of the reason why you're seeing. And, and I think what you're seeing play out on the field is very evident. And it's, it's a testament to the fact that they're not sure. Like, they, like normally, we, this time of the year, we, we can kind of, you know, narrow down the roster to about 40, 45 guys. We're like, okay, look. It's only about eight roster spots up for grabs, and then we could kind of talk about the positional battles and then the few spots that are absolutely actually up for grabs. Like we have no idea this year, absolutely zero. We don't know at the receiver position. We thought we did. We have no idea at the receiver position. We don't know if they're keeping five. Could they possibly be keeping six? We don't know. Same at running back. We we got an idea of running back, but is it four? Is it five? You know, we'll see. Um, tight end. Is it three? Is it four? Who are the three? We have no clue at all whatsoever. Um, offensive line, we know it's probably going to be every bit of 9-10. All right, who are those guys? We don't know. We're not sure. Um, you know, quarterback, probably confident that they're going to keep three quarterbacks this year. Uh, but then you get to the other side of the football, defensive line. Well, we feel really good, whether you're talking ends or, or interior defensive linemen. But, you know, who are some of those ancillary guys, on the, especially on the edges? You know, there's Kerrigan, there's Anderson. There's Sweat and there's uh, Young. That's four. Are you only keeping four? Are you keeping five? Who's that fifth guy? We don't know. Um, same with the interior defensive line. You know, the thought process was that, oh, yeah, probably going to keep um, the um, ex-Florida Gator. He, he decided to opt out so that you would think there's another spot available. You know, there's Ioannidis, Settle, Payne, and Allen. Are you keeping a fifth defensive lineman? And if so, who? Because we thought Caleb Brantley was going to be a fifth guy. Well, are they keeping four or are they going to keep five? And if so, who's the fifth guy? Don't know. Uh, linebackers. That's the position. And Rivera said uh, very few positions set in our minds. And then he, he went to linebacker, immediately went to linebacker and said different groups on the field, um, especially at linebacker. This is like the third time I've told you Ron Rivera talking about the linebacker position in particular and saying, look, we got so much diversity, so much uh, depth at linebacker that we don't even know what to do with it. We're putting these guys in. We're cycling them in and out of the first team reps. So there's just so much depth at linebacker, so much diversity that they don't know. So we don't know. So this roster is just, it's crazy. So um, you're seeing that all the time. Um, Rivera also said, watching guys very closely coming off injuries, uh, he made it a point to reference three guys in particular, Ruben Foster, Alex Smith, and Bryce Love. He said, look, we're really going to be monitoring those guys' snaps. There'll be some days off for those guys. Um, we just want to make sure we bring those guys back responsibly. So again, we talked about Bryce Love earlier in the show, but, you know, and how a lot of fans after the guy situation and, and his release have automatically gone straight to Bryce Love and they're looking for big things from Bryce Love right out of the gate. And I'm here to tell you, slow your roll. All right. I want Bryce Love to be bought, bought back in a very reasonable fashion. I want them to bring him back at a pace that allows him to get his feet wet. Remember, this guy has not played a single down in the National Football League. He has no idea the speed of the game. So one thing it's one thing to practice. There's a totally different thing to get in there and game speed. So I'm, I'm anxious to see him play just as much as the next man, but I also want to see him um, brought back in a way that will allow him to be maximized come the midpoint towards the end of the season when he should be really um, back to where he needs to be, legs under him, and comfortable in the system. So um, that, that was interesting. He said, Rivera also said the defensive line has been super impressive uh, thus far. Been, they've been the standouts in camp uh, to this point. 
um, and he kind of went down the line, talked about the ends and the interior defensive linemen, really been impressed with them, he says. And then this was something that I loved that he said. He's going to be very vague when it comes to injuries. He says, look, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really brutally honest with you. And he was talking to the media on one of these Zoom pressers. He said, look, I don't have to give you any information on injuries during camp, okay? So you're not going to get a lot out of me. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to play doctor. But also, I'm not looking to give the opposition uh, a bunch of information as to what our guys are going through and, and what's ailing them. Anything that's a disadvantage for us is, it in, is, is an advantage to the opposition, and I'm not looking to give that. So if I don't have to give you anything for injuries, I'm not really going to. So if a guy misses practice, he might have missed it with a lower injury, a lower extremity injury, or he might have missed it with an upper body injury. But I might not even give you that. I'll just say he missed practice with an injury. It's minor. He'll be back. And he did that essentially with Ryan Anderson and Sadiq Charles because we still don't know what the hell is wrong with Sadiq Charles. He won't tell us. And I actually like that. Okay. These last couple of coaches gave us way too much information on injuries. And th that's not necessary. You know, with the Patriots, we never know what the hell's going on. They Every week, the Patriots have 30 guys on the injury report. And it's not specific. They don't say hamstring. It just says leg or knee. So um, I, I love it. I, I think it's great. Um, you get to KPL, and he spoke, and this is my first time hearing KPL speak and address the media. Really impressive guy. I, I, I could see why he's been around the league a couple of times. Similar to um, the linebacker we signed last year that had been around the league that I wasn't the biggest fan of when we first signed him. I said, oh, he's just a, a younger, faster version of uh, Mason Foster. But he came in, showed the leadership qualities that uh, forced them to re-sign him this offseason. And KPL is a guy that they brought in, and we've heard nothing but good things from him. Jack Del Rio just can't stop talking about KPL. Ron Rivera talked about him as well. And um, he specified where he's been playing to this point. He said, look, you know, they're just interchange. They're changing us. We're interchangeable parts at the linebacker position. He's like, I don't know if I've been around this much depth at linebacker before. You know, I've been on teams where there have been some elite linebackers, like in, in Seattle, where he played with, you know, um, K.J. Wright and obviously Bobby Wagner. But he's like, as far as the depth is concerned, man, I don't know if I've been – on a team where it's this much depth and, and so many guys can do so many things. But he said right now they've specifically got him playing the Sam linebacker position. So that's strong side linebacker. So a lot of people have been saying, oh, KPL, they really like him inside. No, they like him at strong side backer. And he said he's been playing a ton of dime backer as well. So that's interesting to know. Normally when you're in your dime package, there's only one linebacker on the field. If you're in traditional dime package, you've got six defensive backs on the field, four corners, two safeties, and you've got four defensive linemen and one linebacker. So if he's the only guy on the field, he's been working in with the dime package. That, that says a lot about his range, his speed, and his coverage ability if they like him in that particular package. And he's been working strong side backer. So gives us a little bit of a feel as to where he's been playing mostly in camp to this point. Um, he said he came here because of the opportunity. He really liked the opportunity here with a young football team, um, with a new regime coming in. He said he didn't know that there was this much depth at linebacker. Hell, we didn't know it was this much depth at linebacker. But he's like, it's a lot of guys here. But he, he's, he loves the competition and he loves the opportunity that he's getting. And I thought, I just said, I left his presser saying, he reminds me a lot of Terry McLaurin in the sense that he just gets it. Well-spoken, very eloquent. And he understands. He's very self-aware. Um, he just gets it, man. And um, I, I could see how he could easily be one of, of a coach's favorite players. You know, I, I could see that. Uh, KPL, um, definitely a guy that I, I like a lot more after hearing him speak. Steven Sims stepped to the mic. You don't really hear from Steven Sims very often. So this might have been one of my first times hearing him at a uh, presser before. But he, he talked about... Uh, this year being a lot different for starters, 
He says, I'm working inside and outside. I'm not just playing the slot. They got me playing out wide as well. So I've definitely seen my role expand in the offense. He said, look, um, I'm fighting for a starting spot. He said, look, I feel like it's mine in, in terms of the slot, but I'm still fighting with Kid and with uh, Trey Quinn. Kid is Kidzy, Darvin Kidzy, for those of you who didn't understand who Kid was. But he said, yeah, I'm fighting with these guys for you know the starting slot role. He's not fighting, but I like that mentality, and I tweeted that out when uh, I think it was either John Kime or J.P. Finley that, that tweeted out that he said that, and I said that's the kind of mentality you want from your guy, even though it was J.P. because I remember saying that, and J.P. said at the end, P.S., it's his spot. That's his spot. He's got that locked down, and I'm like, that's facts. He's the guy inside in, in the slot, uh, but... Um, I just I love that mentality and, and he's a guy that you, you're going to watch this year and he said he's just so much more comfortable this year and and come on I mean isn't that really easy to understand last year this man was fighting for his NFL life last year just trying to make a roster as an undrafted guy and by any means necessary this year he's going to make not only is he going to make the football team but he's a guy we're going to be relying on and, and to the point now where they're moving him around and he's like really comfortable with what they're asking him to do. And he says he, he, he loves how Scott Turner is moving him around and putting him in different positions. And, you know, last year there was something that we really didn't see from Steven Sims. And that was him going and getting the ball down the field. Really, Steven Sims was an underneath guy, really working the short to intermediate game. Um, get it in his hands quickly and let him work that way. He's like, yeah, they're giving me more opportunities to actually take routes vertically up the field. So that's something that we didn't really see from him last year. And, and he can run, and we know that. So um, I think that's something they need to take advantage of. And I think this coaching staff and this organization understands that uh, we got another guy in Steven Sims that can run. We need to utilize that to help stretch the football field vertically. So that's also something uh, that you heard from Steven Sims. Bryce Love spoke uh, today. He talked about coming off the injury and how it changed his perspective. He also said that he's preparing every day, and he said he learned this from Christian McCaffrey, that he's preparing every day like he's the starter. And, and that's what he got from McCaffrey. Remember, those two were at Stanford together. He was behind Christian McCaffrey. Excuse me, when McCaffrey put up those cartoon, cartoonish numbers at Stanford, he then followed up um, with cartoonish numbers after McCaffrey left, and he said it was the preparation he had uh, with McCaffrey on the roster that helped prep him for his outbreak at Stanford, and so um, he's, he's preparing like that now, even though he's not the starter for this football team right now. He said he's, he's, um, he's preparing and carrying himself as if he's the starter, and, and again, you love to hear it. I got to get this man a New Jersey number, though, because 35 is just hideous on a running back. It screams, I'm not a baller. So we got to get this man in a, in a real running back number. Worst case scenario, if you got to go to the 30s as a running back, it's 33, maybe 32. But anything north of 33, it just it doesn't work for the running back position. And so we got to get this man in a real running back number and you know what it's going to be tough because as I look at the 20s I think they're all pretty much spoken for you know you got um Landon Collins with 20 nobody's wearing 21 uh DeShazer Everett is wearing 22 um 23 is Ronald Darby 24 is Antonio Gibson 25 is Peyton Barber 26 is um, 26, I forgot who's wearing 26, but I think it's somebody that's going to make the football team. 27 is, I don't know who 27 is. 28 is, you know, a number that shouldn't be worn. It's Daryl Green's old number. Um, so nobody's wearing that. 29 is Kendall Fuller after Geist left. So I don't know if he's going to be able to get a number in the 20s, but we got to do something. Something has to be done. AD is 26, as a matter of fact, now that I'm thinking about it. AD is 26. I don't know who is 27. S somebody's got, he's got to do something. We got to get him in a 20 number or a better 30 number. But I digress. Um, 
Louis T. Network.